Hi, I'm Mrs. B and this is my daughter, Sadie. And she's here today to help me show you how easy it is to create some beautiful watercolour artworks. Ready to get started? Yeah. Okay. and I'll show you how to make these. It's so much fun and it's so easy. The materials you need for this task. They are some watercolour paints. You'll need some watercolour paper, which is just a bit thicker than normal paper. You'll need a pencil, You'll need a few different sized brushes with some clean water to use the watercolours and later we'll be adding some details with a fine liner. Let's get started. Cool. Okay, here we are and I have my daughter Sadie who is with me today because I want to show you how simple this task is and that this is perfect for any age. Sadie, how old are you? Five. Five. She's only just turned five. So this is a very much introductory task for watercolours. So the first thing we're going to do, Sadie, is get something circular and small. And we're going to trace around it on our page. We're going to have our circle sitting at the top here. And when we trace, it's very important to trace as lightly as you possibly can because we don't want to see oops, our pencil mark. Okay. So when I put that away, you can see I've got a big circle at the top of my page there, but I've drawn it so lightly. Can you have a go, Sades? Here. Yeah. yeah. Finished. Great. Now I'm going to do two artworks today using similar strategies. I want to show you how to apply this technique twice. So on our second piece of paper, we're going to do a similar thing. Get our same little cup here and we're going to draw around it, but this time it's sort of in the middle of our page, maybe a little bit to the left there. And we're gonna trace around it and that will become our second artwork. Did it. Excellent, so let's leave that one to the side. We'll do that next. Alrighty, we don't need the cup anymore, but we do need our paint brushes. I'm gonna use a medium sized brush and our biggest friend today is our container of water. If you use watercolors with not enough water, you are pretty much just coloring in. We wanna use the water to make the colors blend and bleed and look beautiful on our page. So, you ready to go, Sadie? Yes. Great. We are gonna paint this entire page, but not our circle. We're gonna leave the circle white. So no paint in here just out here. Make sense? And we're going to use yellows and greens and blues. Okay. The reason we're using yellows and greens and blues is because they're all harmonious colors. So when we are blending the colors together, they are going to blend really nicely. So Sadie, I'm going to start off with no color at all. I'm actually just going to paint, or oh, there's a little bit of blue still on my brush. I'm just going to paint a bit of water on the side here. I'm not gonna go into this circle. I'm gonna paint around my circle as best I can and grab some paint on my paper. Done. Great. So now we're gonna get a bit of blue on our brush and we're just going to add some blue to our wet water. What you should notice is that the blue is bleeding and blending. Try and just do it up here, sweetie, where the water is. You can even add some more water to make the colors bleed a little bit more and come out further. Now I'm just gonna add my second color and it's gonna be this beautiful turquoise and I'm gonna get this turquoise to blend with my blue by painting over the top of my blue a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so paint over the top of the blue a little bit around the corner. 
here because the colors will blend really nicely. Perfect. What's blend mean? Good question. It means that the colors merge together really nicely. What's merge mean? <laughs> it means that the colors sort of become friends like this. It's not just one color, one color. They're kind of merging together. Can you see that there? And that's a really good thing about watercolors. All right, next bit. We're gonna continue this, but we're gonna bring the water around to the other side. Remember, we're not painting inside our circle here. We're just painting with water now, Sadie. Mm -hmm. Again. And you can continue to put some color over the top here. I might add a bit of green. You can pretty much do any colors you want within this greeny, bluey, yellow family. And to blend, you're sort of bringing the colors on top of each other, making sure that it's super watery. Beautiful, Sadie. Now, we're gonna to continue to add just water again. Yeah. Here. Yeah, all the way around, connect those two. Excellent. I'm now gonna add some yellow to my water. There. Bring it all the way down with lots of water. Water first, sweetie, that's it. Bring the water down, all the way down. Good, over the top. Perfect. All right, wonderful. Excellent, Sadie. Well, we're gonna now leave this to dry. It will take a little while to dry, not too long. So we need to carefully place it somewhere. There we go, so now we have our second piece of paper and we're gonna do something similar in that we're not gonna paint inside this circle again, okay Sadie? We're gonna paint around it. So, but this time we're gonna do a darker line up the top, coming down, 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 making it blend to a different color down the bottom. So what I'll show you now, let's start with our blue again. And I'm gonna paint a nice dark watery blue. All right, needs to be really watery, just like that. Can you do that for me, please? Sure. What do you do? Yeah, no, Maybe. just a nice big blue Maybe stripe. Blue. Blue. Water first? No, just blue. Mm. It's a different technique I'm showing you. So, girl, get a little bit more paint on your brush, so really rub the brush into the paint. That's a girl. Okay. Yep, that and that will make your colour darker. Good. Go right to the edges. Beautiful. Is it nice and watery? Yep. That looks wonderful. All right, now we're going to change colors. Wait. We're going to get a nice watery pink. And now, have a look at this, Sadie. I'm going to swipe my brush, just sort of overlapping the blue. Mm -hmm. See what happens. Remember, don't paint over your circle there. Yeah. Good, and we're continuing the pink down. We're trying to paint in a nice stripey kind of line. Perfect, and avoiding this circle if you can. I'm gonna just paint a little bit over that lighter pink and the colors blend. Remember that word blend? Mm -hmm. Blend, and I'm gonna continue this darker pink down. Now this will not blend if the colors aren't watery enough, so water, is your best friend when using watercolors because it can help you to merge water. the colors. Not our best friend. <laughs> it is when we're using watercolors. Oh, look at that. Lovely. We're gonna add one lucky last color. You can use whatever colors you want at home. They just need to sort of mix nicely together. So I'm gonna go a bit darker down the bottom here. Merge them again, blending them again, Sades, yeah? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Painting a nice horizontal sweeping motion like that, right to the edges. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, we're gonna let that dry as well. It's nice and dry, isn't it? Yes. So the next thing we're gonna do is add some details with a fine liner or Sharpie, some sort of pen. 
We could turn it into so many different things. But today, this circle here is going to become a moon. So this is an optional thing. If you have a sharpener around, what I'll get you to do is just put a few pencil shavings on the side of your moon. So I've got the shavings here. And we're just going to lightly smudge them just around the side using our fingers to go around the edge of our moon. Right, now with our fine liner, you could probably choose to do anything you'd like, but we're gonna do a field. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a nice long line coming out like that. Can you have a go at that, Sadie? We're gonna do that a couple of times. A few of them, nice long ones, overlapping like that. Good saves. As neat as you can. We're gonna have some shorter ones here now. Different lengths. It doesn't Ooh. matter where you put your lines. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. The idea is just to do some different heights and have a few crossing over the top of each other. We're now going to turn these long, beautiful lines into a field of wheat. Now notice I haven't been too picky with drawing my wheat. I've really just done a scratchy kind of line. It starts thin, gets a bit thicker and then goes thin again. If you do that to all of your lines, it'll start to look like a bit of a field. You could also choose to add in a few reeds of different thicknesses, different heights. And remember, yours does not need to be exactly like mine. Remember that too, Sadie. This is your artwork. I'm just teaching you some strategies to be able to have a go yourself, to create your own artwork. Once again, try and get your lines a bit closer together. Yeah. It is important to continue on your wheat in the same direction that the line was going. So my line's going this way, so I've continued my wheat in the same direction. If I did the wheat coming out here, the picture wouldn't make a lot of sense. All right, as a lucky last detail, we're gonna put a few birdies in the sky, flying away off into the moonlight. Did it. Good. Now we're going to do a similar thing to our other beautiful picture and that is we're going to use this negative space circle here and turn it into something. Now it could be lots of different things but today we're going to turn it into a dandelion. So the watercolour is going to become our background, the circle will become the head of the dandelion. So now we need to go from the centre of our circle here and do a nice strong line all the way down to the bottom of the page. Excellent, fantastic. Now, what we need are some straight lines coming out from this point here, out just to sort of the edge of our white circle here. So we're gonna try and get these lines as straight as we can. And we're gonna have a go at doing some all the same direction or same width like this. But we're also gonna have a go at doing some shorter ones like this and some longer ones. So have a play with different heights but it should be fairly full of straight neat lines make sense mm -hmm. great great Thanks. now we're not quite finished yet on a dandelion, these little whispery bits have little details on the end. They're kind of like crosses. So let's just take some time to do tiny little crosses 
on the end of our lines. The cross should be teeny tiny and go on the end of the line there. That kind of suggests that our dandelion little fireflies are sitting out like that. Once your dandelion looks a little bit like this, you might choose to do the final step and that is draw a couple of lines with crosses on the end floating away as dandelions do. Pretending that your dandelion has started to lose some of its little fireflies from itself and they're flying off into the wind. Right, the last thing we're going to do in the corner here is sign our name or our initials for a beautifully completed watercolour picture. Sadie, who is just over five years old, had a really good go at doing the watercolour and also drawing the details with the lines over the top. So as you can see, I think anyone can have a go at this task. Well done, Sadie. It's as simple as that. Thank you for joining Sadie and I today. And I hope that you subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel because I'll be posting two episodes per week for you to learn how to do some really fun and easy art at home. Please make sure you also comment and like below and I'll have a go at giving you a message back. See everybody.